Welcome back and thank you very, very much indeed for your attention this morning. We're getting to our news review segment shortly, but first let's sh uh, share with you what the front pages are saying. Daily Heritage says a Japa deal insulting Imani demands rejection uh, and protest also. Another woman attacked with cutlass over which, which demands. And uh, communities mentioned by Bormia Tracker in it does not exist or do not exist according to the NABDAM NDC. Medra of Pram Pram Mankralo family calls for swift action on dispute over stool. And then actually Benta there was gruesomely murdered some time ago. The police says they are investigating. The new publisher, a Japa royalty deal is terrible and corrupt. Imani's Kofi Bentel declares, and he says that, well, it is not about expertise, but it's because the government works for us and we need to demand for answers from them. The fact that we cannot cook, can we not tell what the, the taste of the soup looks like, uh, feels like? If we do NDC candidate begs a finger marking, NDC members storm Nima police station to demand the release of small scale miners president. Two killed at Gang Festival as bullets fly comes with a photo of lawyer and Bruce Derry, who is a minister for the interior. The Ghanaian Observer, Truth Stands Observing Ghana in Truth, founded AD 2006. Finance Ministry clears air over a Japa deal, says arrangement is 100% state-owned. Also, Cap 30 for all security services, Vice President Dr. Maria De, uh, interacting with some uh, officers who passed out at uh, the prison's uh, training school. Uh, Gessem's made up made in Ghana 4P major boost for local business. And Carlos Ahinkra tipped to win the Tema West seat by 63% of votes. Okay, um, the Daily, Heri Daily Analyst, Kotoka reopens for international flights, but under strict measures, President announced yesterday. And Odenho Krokoko the second remains um, Omahin of Wasafiase, uh, traditional area. There you have it there. Okay, the publisher newspaper, I think we've read this one already. The Economy Times, BOG prepares to unwind some counter cyclical measures. KI opens, arriving passengers to spend 15 minutes to get their COVID 19 test results, no quarantine, and it starts from the 1st of uh, September. That's tomorrow. The Daily Guy, Nana opens Kotoka Airport, a Japa fight gets hotter, 100% government owned, another which brutality. Case recorded. A Hoya book gives NDC headache. Daily graphic. President abda ab uh, updates, uh, abates COVID-19 restrictions. I beg your pardon. And international flights resume tomorrow. Land, sea, borders remain closed. New academic year begins in January 2021. Government wholly owns a Japa, according to the finance minister. Clients of 22 fund managers to be paid the Securities and Exchange Commission has promised a daily graphic editor picks award and uh, gra gra graphic virtual photo exhibition opens today. Also on the back page, rearing for food and jobs to distribute 929,000 livestock. Farmers in Northern Region introduced to fire detection mobile app. The BNFT is our next. It says leadership changes at KEK Insurance Group. Also, air border opens tomorrow for all flights. Rapid testing system deployed at the Kotka International Airport. Land and sea borders remain closed. And SOE is growth suppressed by political interest. How? Find out and read. The Ghanaian Times. Kotoka International Airport opens tomorrow. Land, sea ports remain closed. Also, senior and junior high schools reopen October 5 as government further eases COVID-19 restrictions. A Japa is 100% government owned. It comes in a photo of uh, Finance Minister Ken Oferiakta. Two shot dead at Homo celebration. Alleged with 60 beaten at Damongo. And uh, finally, the, B, the, the Finder newspaper. Government owns a Japa. 100% finance ministry. Nigerians in Ghana not being harassed. Kojo Ponkrumah is information minister. And President Akufuado cut sword at Keta for 85 million euros water project to benefit 400,000 people in three districts of water. Court clears customers of 22 firms and the SEC to receive payments. And court orders NDC candidate to apologize to uh, Afenyo Marking, pay 25,000 Ghana cities over defamation. My guest this morning, the Honorable Motala uh, Mohammed, he likes to be called Comrade. He is the NDC's parliamentary candidate for the Tamale Central constituency. Uh, he is also a former deputy trade minister, and he's joining us this morning. And also, Andrew Ejapa Mesa is a legal practitioner and a, and a, and 
and uh, a, a member of the communication team of the MPP as well, an MP for second D. I can see the at the Saddle College uh, emblem showing right behind. Bobo, how are you doing? I'm well, yourself? Alive and well. Mutala, Mutala, how are you? Alhamdulillah, we can't complain. I see. Let's start uh, on the note of uh, the borders being opened yesterday by the president. How does that come to you, uh, the air borders, I must say? Mutala, I start with you. How does that come to you? Well, let me say good morning to you, my good friend, and of course, the European public and the people of uh, Tamale Central. Uh, there is no denying the fact that we are all confronted with the challenge of COVID-19. And it is a wish of everybody that we get out of it. I think that I will be the happiest person of all of us. We'll be very happy if we wake up one morning and COVID is gone. Then I will stand and we need to be very, very careful. And to be very honest, I wonder the kind of advices His Excellency the President gets. Because he makes statements that clearly are absolutely and utterly not true. How? One, if you have a president or a government that communicates to his people and telling them that we have had a reduction of COVID active cases and therefore we are doing too well, when the government knows that one, they have stopped testing, and in fact, if they haven't stopped, there isn't any vigorous testing any longer. Contact tracing is completely stopped as was announced by the same government. <laughs> How do you determine the number of active cases if you are not doing vigorous testing? It is very clear that once testings are not done or not done vigorously, you will not be able to have numbers. All the numbers we had, and I remember when we had this same discussion on this platform, mm. I indicated and challenge TV3 to find out out of the total number of cases that were tested and communicated to the people of this country, what percentage of it was done in the last two months, you would realize that less than 10% or even less than 5% was done. Look, I'll give a classical example. Just less than two, three months ago, there was a testing done at the police training school in Tamale. My checks okay. at the testing center in Tamale indicates that out of 600 samples that we sent had tested positive, nobody in this country had that particular information because government is openly massaging the figures. To what gain? Nobody is accusing this government for bringing COVID on the people of this country. What we have said... COVID is a global pandemic, Mutala. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Nobody has accused this government mm. that this government has brought COVID to the people of this country. Everybody knows that it's the global pandemic that confronts the entire international community. Mm. What we have said repeatedly, and justifiably so, mm. is that the conduct of this government in managing it was absolutely reckless. I listened to His Excellency the President yesterday and he said, that mm -hmm. yes, COVID was imported into this country when he was making references to you know, opening the, the airports. Mm. But whose recklessness led to it being brought into this country? When there were demands made on this government that you needed to close our borders, you needed to put the necessary mechanisms in place to ensure that we do not have this because there were evidences of many countries that had this COVID as a result of people moving in. It took the president almost a month or more to take the actions that people demanded on him. Science That's and one. data. The scientists advised the president. I remember the Ghana Medical Association. They made it very clear that they, he needed to close the borders. He didn't simply care. He didn't care. Civil society groups, in fact, those with the expertise in some of this area, demanded that the borders be closed. The president refused to do so. It took them over a month to do what they were demanding. By which time, the so-called importation of it, which the president himself alluded to, had happened. So the recklessness of this government and the irresponsibility of this administration led to the problems we have in well, But right I mean, now, right now we have, we have had a testing regime at the airports 
It's rapid. You can get your, your results quickly for anybody who is coming in. And that, that's a brighter side to look at, no? Well, uh, 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 Johnny, I think that let's stop, you know, pretending. I ask a simple question. And if you want us to discuss this issue, we need to discuss it holistically. The president keep on announcing that, yes, as a result of the measures they put in place, there is a reduction in active cases. <laughs> Why wouldn't there be reduction in active cases? When you have stopped contact tracing, when you have virtually stopped testing, why wouldn't there be a reduction in active cases? It would, be, it would be appropriate for you to tell us the truth so that we all know that, yes, there is a challenge you are confronted with so that everybody will individually and collectively take that responsibility. But you see, let me also make this point. The president warned that people have disregarded or virtually disregarded the protocols mm. and that there are sanctions. I mean, who disregarded the protocols than President Nanado and, and Dr. Bomi and the entire MPP? When they went and when they held their Congress, against every single aspect advice, the protocols of COVID was thrown to the dogs when they had their Congress. And in fact, the conduct of some of their MPs and ministers was so appalling. They tried to justify that. Now, if the chief comes home with a weird haircut, what does he expect his subjects to do? So look, this pretense of trying to be holier than thou and trying to create the impression as if this government cares. Look, it cannot. I think that story should be But, uh, but it doesn't take away the fact that things have improved at the Kotuka International Airport ahead of opening the borders tomorrow. What, and we what, should give tell credit. Me, tell me specifically what has improved there. Tell me. Well, I mean, the Look, testing regime, the testing regime there, the fact that you can get your result instantaneously. Okay, so, so the testing be done at the airport, yet thousands, if not millions of Ghanaians who are infected every single day for them, they can go and die. Those who are coming from a brochure, they can test them. They can come with the necessary testing results. You know, what about millions, thousands, if not millions of Ghanaians who are infected? And every single aspect advice points to the recklessness of this government. So you see, Look, I will be very happy to hear that we don't have COVID in Ghana. I will be very happy to hear that globally COVID is gone. But let's stop this pretense. How can you come and tell the people of this country that, yes, we are going to ensure that people respect the protocols when the very protocols are disregarded, disrespected by your good self? Didn't the president know? Didn't he hear? Didn't he? Why did he refuse to listen to the expert advice when they bent on having their Congress? And you and everybody witness what happened and in fact you know true to the projections of people who said the expect who, who said that if nothing if the the ndc went sorry the mpp went ahead with the 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 congress we were going to have numbers increasing but look at the numbers you claim that the numbers are not increasing because you have instructed the testing be stopped and that is why i gave you a classical example the Bulgar police training school they sent about 600 samples to be tested in Tamale. Over 50% tested positive. Did any of us in this country hear the results? And, and you know so, this for a fact? You know this for a fact? Well, if it is not a fact, let you are a journalist. You see, that is why when we had this program, I think last two weeks or three weeks, I challenge you and I challenge your station to find out the total number of testing that has been done for which the government and its communicators... Well, well you, are, you are alleging, so I want you to prove it, that over 50% that, of those samples... I am saying that, find out, I have made that statement and I'm making it publicly, find out my checks. In fact, the information I got from the, the testing center is over 50% tested positive. From now, the Borga Training School? Yes, when they sent it to do the testing in Tamale. If they claim that it wasn't 50%, did you ever hear that they did the testing of the training school and there was any positive test. Did you ever hear? And I don't think they can deny the fact that there wasn't any testing. You see, if you want to get the facts, that is why I challenge your station, mm. that you have journalists who are investigative journalists because this government will come out and... Well, well, well we're on it. We're on it. We're, we're working. Uh, we're on it. I, but just... from, I'm saying that with this statement I have just made, Go and, but in any case, why is it that we don't, we are not doing even the testing? Why is it that we're told every single week the number of testings that have been done and those who have been infected with it? Why is it that we are no longer communicated? To, and, are, are you also challenging the assertion that the, the government position was that contact tracing be stopped? Now, okay. Does it even make sense to you 
that someone comes, you have the testing that is done on the person. The person is tested positive. The person would have indeed mingled with people, traveled across the country. And you say that, no, just take care of the person who has been tested and it is positive. Forget about the people he came into contact, contact with. One, we know that the spread of this virus is a res as a result of human to human contact. I mean, simply, it doesn't make sense. Okay, thank you. Bobo, what makes sense to you? Does the opening of the borders, uh, the air border, make sense to you? Well, let me say good morning to our cherished viewers, mm. uh, particularly those in the house. It's interesting how my friend. Bobo, you'd have to speak up a bit for me. That is interesting how my friend Mutala is going about this entire COVID business this morning. Because clearly, uh, the statements that he's making are uh, self contradictory. Uh, it cannot be the case that you would determine new cases essentially on a day-by-day -day basis that the Ghana Health Service is reporting when you are not doing a test. Because if you don't do a test, you cannot determine whether you have new cases or not. So clearly, if his assertion that testing has stopped, then what it would then mean is that no new cases will be determined in this country. But Johnny, is that the case? Is the Ghana Health Service not reporting new cases all the time that they provide an update on COVID? So how then do you say they stop testing? Did I say that? Allow, That's allow. exactly what I said. That what testing... What's allow? Not your, not your reservations. Bobo, make progress. In any event, you see, look, I think that, and as has been claimed, acclaimed across the globe, the Excellency, the President's leadership has led to Ghana being able to manage COVID better than most countries have. And indeed, he makes assertions to the effect that the delay in closing the borders was what led to the first reported cases in this country in the first place. Do you have a different view? You and I know that mm -hmm. at all times, of course, we're working with WHO, which then provided indication as to the actions that governments should take. At the time that the borders were not closed, clearly travel advisory bans had not been put in place. So it didn't make sense for you to stop people from moving about even though COVID had extended to some countries. And, and, and obviously, we all know the impact of what it is that the closure of borders have done to lives and livelihoods. But, but Bobo, okay. the, the president... The, Bobo, WHO, Bobo. I'm giving you the science and the data that informs government decision. Okay. Okay, when the WHO indicated that, look, at the point that we've gotten to, it was important for countries to impose bans. This government acted almost immediately in placing a ban or closing down our borders. Bobo, so okay. my, my, so question, my question is, Bobo, so my, sorry, my, that the president is, yeah. so. my question is that the Ghana Medical Association had raised a red flag. Uh, some respected virologists as well and uh, epidemiologists, Professor Fred Binka, for example, comes to mind. He says, shut down the border. Dr. Norman Ishmael of ISDI says, shut down the border. So many of them said that. The president had told all of us that we're going to do tailor-made solutions for us, not what everybody else was doing around the world. So was that our tailor-made solution to wait until the WHO said so, or our tailor-made solution was to Johnny, listen to our experts here? When, 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 when Mutala made the statement to the effect that the Ghana Medical Association called for the closure mm. of the borders, mm. I did a quick Google search, and <laughs> as at the time that you brought me on, I hadn't seen any stories to that effect. But I recall, and I saw an internet reportage of me where the Ghana Association, Ghana Medical Association, had asked government not to open the borders. Mm. So if those assertions that the Ghana Medical Association called for the closure of the borders and government disregarded it. In any event, Johnny, who was leading the Ghana COVID-19 fight? A former deputy director of the WHO. Clearly, he had the expertise and the competences to provide advice as to what to do. Okay? Mm. Now, we've gone past that. COVID, indeed, if you say government was reckless, irresponsible, mm. are you suggesting that in excess of 180 countries across the world that has COVID, all their governments were reckless and irresponsible? Is that your suggestion? Did COVID arrive in every country at the same time? Obviously, it started in one China and found its way around into every country some way, somehow. So if you are saying that because Ghana had cases imported, Government was reckless. 
Then are you suggesting that all 180 countries across the world who had COVID had irresponsible governments? He's asking of their contact tracing. What happened to it? Of oh, contract tracing is still ongoing. Is it? It's only yeah. when people are times. Of course, aggressive contact tracing right from the very beginning, okay, when we all did not know the nature of the disease. Obviously, it's different from now. And indeed, and in fact, many people are complying with the protocols. That is why, even though according to Mutala, contact tracing has stopped, which is not true, okay, our hospitals are not being overwhelmed. They are because, not? Are they? The health officials say, Look, the oh, way we are going, if we don't take care... Point, I said that our hospitals are not being overwhelmed. Okay. And you say, are they? I'm asking you, are they? No, I don't answer questions. You know that. Like you are the journalist. Report hospitals that are overwhelmed with cases of COVID that they are lying on the ground and dying on the streets like we saw in Italy and Spain. Let's not do this. There are several matters that we can play politics with. Mm. Look... His Excellency the President announced a phased reopening of this country at an earlier address to the nation. Mm. <laughs> Subsequently, indeed, calls were even made that our schools should not be open. Our secondary school students should be left to hang around without any thought of what will happen to them if they don't get to conduct their examinations. His Excellency the President, based on sound advice, did the need for our children have gone to school completed. University students have gone and completed. SHS students have gone and completed. And JHS people are also as we speak in schools preparing to write their examinations. This is a government that has acted at all times in the best interest of Ghana, mm. taking into consideration the protection of lives and livelihoods and also the public health of this country, such that COVID active cases are today less than 2,000. Indeed, it's 1,050 something. Okay? Mm. So it's important that because the world is moving back to normal, because we all know that if we practice the social distancing protocols, because we all know that if we deploy the enhanced mm -hmm. hygiene protocol, we are better in a better position not to contract it. But Bobo, are you aware? Are you aware, Bobo? For example, are you aware? Are you aware that there are persons who have tested positive for coronavirus who are asked to manage themselves from their very own homes? Are you aware? But of course, it depends on the extent of the of 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 of, of, of your sickness. <laughs> right so, from the of course, people have tested positive but do not need hospital attendance. But they can they can transfer the virus, and if they all That's stay at the health facilities, it will mean that then the hospitals will be overwhelmed. Correct. Hold on, hold on. You asked me a question. Let me answer. No, I, I hadn't finished my question, and then you were answering. People were made to isolate at home. What has changed? Because if your symptoms were not severe and did not require hospital attendance, mm. then you are advised to self-isolate at home and ensure that you do not transmit the virus to people that you live with. Okay. Right from the very beginning of COVID. Okay. That has been the protocol. So, so, my, my, so my, question, my question is that I'm, I'm asking if you are aware that people are isolating and treating themselves at home. If Absolutely. you are... Because if they, great. If so, they, so let me finish my question. Please hold on, hold on. No, I've not if finished they, my question. You are, you're not allowing me to ask my question. Allow me, allow me, allow me, please. allow me. I'm saying that people have tested positive and they have been asked to stay at home and manage themselves. But we do yes. know that they have the potential of spreading this virus if they don't take proper care. And I'm asking, would we have been able to accommodate all of them in our hospitals? Give, granted that you say the health facilities are not overwhelmed. And that's, Johnny, that's, that's the question I'm asking you. In advanced countries, United States, UK, Germany, wherever, people who test positive and do not show symptoms, have mild symptoms, do not require hospital beds, are asked to stay at home and manage themselves. Of course, medical personnel do visit them from time to time. And I have a friend of mine whose wife contracted COVID. Okay? She was maintained at home. She never required a hospital bed. What, what, did, what did the president she, mean when he said Taylor made, Taylor made solutions for a, a particular case? What did the president mean when he said Taylor made solutions for a particular case? Because you keep mentioning Taylor made other countries. Case is exactly what it is that we are doing. That look, we are testing, tracing, and treating, okay? At the very beginning, we did not know the nature of the virus. Now we've come to realize that, look, if we employ the social distancing protocols, 
enhanced hygiene protocols and all the protocols that you and I know and practice all the time. Said that when I come to your studio now, you don't even do in-studio interviews. You do Zoom meetings. These are all part of the protocols that we are employed. And the government of Ghana, to the extent that its people are not being overwhelmed by COVID, that people have gone back to some extent. Businesses are open. Some livelihoods are being restored. And people are not contracting the disease in the manner that we saw in other countries that would then lead to a public health crisis. It's a tailor-made situation to manage the situation in Ghana. The, the president is worried that uh, some folks are not observing the protocols. For example, wearing of face masks and maintaining social distancing. I don't know what's happening in second D, but the beer bars are open. Have you seen any of those crowded places recently? Did we bring this upon ourselves? I don't think so. People, people are relaxed, yes, unfortunately. And, 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 and so it was important for his excellency the president to renew the call that look, yes, we are not seeing many cases indeed. Some five regions as we speak do not have any reported case at all. But it's important that to the extent that COVID is still around, around the world in Ghana, it's important that we do not lose our guard and that at all times, make sure that we abide by the safety protocols. Look, I was in the constitution. How, how, do you, how do you abide by safety protocols if you are, you are tipsy, for example, with alcohol? How do you observe the safety protocols? I'm curious to learn. Your personal responsibility is what I can say. When you are okay? drunk? Chief, I'm not in a position to determine how people behave or act when they get drunk. Okay? <laughs> but the point is that how, how can I? The point is this. If you go into a public place, okay, mm. as much as possible, either you maintain the social distancing or you wear your mask. So if people go and get drunk and they maintain the social distance, how am I supposed to know? Uh, why? I go to the drinking bar. No, I'm, so I'm asking, did we bring but this I'm upon ourselves? That, that's a question that's absolutely unfair. And you don't expect me to be in a position to answer that kind of question. Why is it unfair? Who how opened the beer bars? How people behave when they go to drinking bars. But who opened the beer bars? If you were the president, will you know? Ah. Will you know what how people behave when they go to drink a bus? Science and data. Science and data. And of course, you can only admonish people, okay, that yes, you think the beer bar owners, they don't have families to feed. We sit in this country, we are being told that an illegal acti activity is going to be legitimized because it provides livelihoods for people. Okay, the bar, bar, bar operators, they don't have families to feed. What is an illegal activity? Ho hold on, okay. Abutala, hold on for me. That Mr. Mahama is promising would legitimize. Of course, his rationale is that he provides food for the people who engage in it. The private school teachers would not be happy with you that... They don't care about businesses. Mm. The, private school, the private school teachers... Bobo, finally, yes. the private school teachers will not be excited about this, your analogy that we're trying to sustain families because since March, some of them have not gotten a dime in terms of salary wages and they are out of job and they won't get anything paid to them until schools resume in January 2021. If this, your analogy holds true, they will not be happy with you. That's why it's a phased opening. And it's unfortunate, okay, that some segments uh, of, of the economy are still closed. But of course, when you're doing a phased opening of a certain system or the country, you cannot then conclude that everybody would then be allowed to work at the same time. Okay. <laughs> I, I wish my kids were going back to school, but as it is, uh, they wouldn't have to stay home till, 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 till January. Okay. Oh. And, and, and yes, I know that the impact on the teacher. So we can make the case that, look, is it possible for government to consider some relief for those private school teachers who obviously are impacted because the proprietors may not be in a position to pay their salaries throughout the period that the lockdown has taken place through to now generally that we understand, mainly in the primary schools that are going to open. Okay. That's a fair case to make, okay? Mm. But to suggest that because some aspect of the economy has been opened and people are not abiding by the protocols, then means that government hasn't done well. I disagree. Okay. Mutala, step in, uh, unless you have, you have uh, something quickly. Let's, Johnny, I'm, yes. I'm trying to get us to switch what? the topic. So maybe well, two John, minutes, Johnny, Bobo Johnny. gets to us when we switch. Fantastic. One thing I am of much certitude, of my brother's comment on the Okada and many of the issues he talked about, is that 
he is doing politics. I know him to be a very good lawyer. And of course, a member of the legislature. President Muhammad never said he was going to impose a Okada on the people of this country. And if he checks through his own Ghana law report, he would have realized, in fact, you don't even need Ghana law report to check. He would have realized that there are certain things in this country that were not legally binding, that parliament which has the right to make laws indeed regulate some of those activities. President Muhammad said that he is going to regulate it. So what is this business of trying to legitimize an illegitimate activity? What is parliament for? And maybe perhaps we need to have a proper appreciation of what regulation is. So I won't belabor that point. Well, there that are also concerns that a lot of deaths on our roads have been caused by motorbikes, and so that could not be a fantastic when you are regulating and When you are regulating an activity, you are regulating it with some responsibilities. Now, if the responsibilities will ensure that we do not experience these motor accidents, why not? And in any case, Ghana is not the only country that is having that. In fact, some countries have already regulated it. And there are those who always point to Rwanda. In this fraudulent, you know, this uh, 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 things that they brought to be transporting medicines and others who raise issues, they quickly pointed to Rwanda without taking into consideration that that place is mountainous and that they don't have enough rules as we have here. But they pointed out. So I will refer to my brother okay. to point to Rwanda. So there's absolutely nothing Quickly wrong wrap up for me on, on the COVID issue. He also said that I, I tend to be contradicting myself. I have never, I have never, what I said, I said that my understanding is that there hasn't been testing or vigorous testing. Mind you, this government himself, their position is that they are not doing vigorous testing. And he says that President Nanado and the government listened to expert advice. When they were lifting the band and the experts advised them against it, and they were, they were peddling falsehood to the people of this country, that it was based on expert advice. It took the Minister of Finance to come out and say that they took the decision because it was an economic, economical decision and not medical decision. So why is he getting the facts that he's making references to? Another point he made, and I think that it will be important. This, look this, at. He this said will be your final point. Mm. He said the hospitals are not overwhelmed. Why would they be overwhelmed? When pe people are asked to go home, and they see the sad thing about our MPP friends is that they tend to 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 uh, uh, to to more or less treat people suffering, you know, as an academic exercise. Now you have it in your house. Remember when we had these discussions? People who sleep in fifty people, twenty people in a room. Such a person comes to the hospital, he's tested positive, and you ask the person to go home and manage. He doesn't have the luxury to sleep in a basement or to sleep in a room isolated. The purpose for keeping people in the hospital and quarantine them by the state, it is not just that the state feels or relish doing that, but to ensure that the spread of it, maybe perhaps we need to, to go through some proper training as to how this COVID-19 is infected. It is infected, my good friend, through human and human contact. So if someone comes and the person is tested positive and you ask the person to go and, and, and the person doesn't even have a room to sleep. Okay. They sleep about 20, 10, 15 in a room. This is nothing but absolute recklessness. And I'm saying that if there is anybody who violated the protocols, it is he, my, my friend, the NPP, President Nanado and Dr. Bome, and the entire MPP, when okay. the expert advised them against that Congress, they disregarded it because they felt that Political interest was more important than the health and safety of the people of Thank this you. country. Point to you know the number of people, the recklessness of your party, indeed infected as a result of what they had in the Congress. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bobo, uh, let me give you your two as well so we can switch. Uh, and he says that he insists that it, it, the blame must be put on you, the MPP, and the government in power. I'm sure you've seen Mr. Muhammad's tour across the Volta region. I've seen both that of, of, of him and, and the president there. as well. Mm. Okay, great. I'm sure you've seen them. Right. Okay. Yes, we held our Congress against which expert advice? Ghana Were we well, not living in this country when expert advice told us that we shouldn't do the registration? We haven't done it and finished it. You, 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 you threatened help if the registration took place. It's the data that is being generated today confirmatory of your threats that 
COVID is going to spike. Is it? So you see, Johnny, COVID is with us, unfortunately. But we know what to do to prevent ourselves from getting it. Really? I never leave home without a mask. People come to my home, and even if they don't wear a mask, I give them some. Because, because you can afford it. You're yes, a big that's, why when, that's, why, that's why when they come and I know that they probably cannot afford it, I provide them some. That's why Coastal Development Authority is providing thousands of masks to people who cannot afford it. That's why the government of Ghana is providing thousands and thousands of masks to our school children because they recognize that some parents cannot afford to provide their children masks. That's the responsibility of government. That's why it's providing them one hot meal a day so that they don't go about loitering, looking for food so they can pick up the virus. Pe but, 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 I remember also that the government said it was marshalling three companies to produce a mass, uh, a lot of the face masks which will be available on the market. I remember Health Minister Kwikwa Jibaminu saying it at one of his press briefings. And he says that uh, in a space of two weeks or so, we're going to get 3.5 million of those marks, and subsequently we're going to roll out more. Do you know where those marks are? I haven't seen them on the market, by the way. Well, when you go to the secondary schools, the masks they are wearing were all produced by these companies. So you need to be a student to own one of these masks. The president marks that he wears all the time were produced by these companies. Okay, I don't know whether they have outlets that they sell, but the ones that government have procured for specific segments of the population are being distributed to those segments. Okay. Bobo, uh, well, it's, it's frozen. Let's, let's make progress. Um, Mutala, your, uh, your party was built to, to put forward... You have to unmute yourself. Your party was built to put forward your manifesto um, today. You had earlier announced before the NPP. They have done this, but yours isn't coming. Why? What's holding your manifesto? First and foremost, the NPP is not the standard that the NDC uses to run this country. I mean, if the NPP was the standard, then this country would have been a disaster. Because clearly, you are looking for a standard that you would use that Ghanaians would love. I mean, if this standard of TV and robbery, family and friends and girlfriends government and policy formulation that is being engaged in by the MPP is the standard, then I think that God saved this country. So that question itself, with all due respect, Johnny, is preposterous. The MPP is not the standard that the NDC uses. That is one. Two, the NDC issued a statement. And issuing the statement, it was very clear the reasons for the postponement. We indicated briefly in that two or three paragraph statement that it was to afford the National Executive and Council of Elders to approve the, the principles and the opinion the policies and promises that are made in the NDC manifesto. Unlike the MPP, we wouldn't promise something that we will not be able to deliver. And it is appropriate that we, we want the people of this country to hold us responsible and accountable if we are not able to implement the promises that we make in the manifesto. And, and for that reason, there is the need for the Council of Elders and the National Executive of the party which represent the entirety of the party to give its approval to the, 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 the promises and the policy frame that we have in the manifesto. That is just simple and sure that is the reason. Look, uh, Johnny, it is very clear that the people of this country know the class difference between the NDC and the MPP in terms of the development of this country. It is very clear that the NBC are the better managers of the economy of this country than the NPP. It is very clear that the NDC fights corruption. The NPP, as a matter of fact, can't fight corruption because the eyes doesn't see it, the eyes do not see itself. So if you check their manifesto, tell me what they have said about corruption in the manifesto. It is virtually silent. What have they said in it? It is very clear that the NBC is the only party that is, so to speak, a unitary party that sees everybody in this country as just one Ghana, that we do not indeed target a particular group of people because we think that they do not speak the language we speak. The NDC is the only political party in this country that is not going to engage in family and friends government. That's and the office of the special prosecutor. That's an achievement, no? 
what have they been able to achieve? It is an office of vendetta. They appointed another discredited person to lead that particular office. How credible is the gentleman who is leading it? Don't go for a speciality. Respond to the question. I'm, I'm, Respond I'm to the office. I'm, I'm asking a question. The money he's been receiving, tell me what he has been able to do. Tell me. In this country, there are people who have admitted that they are on government payroll. People who are supposed to be doing MPP's work for them. Why is the special prosecutor not interested in that? My brother, it is important if you wanted to mention, just mention a different office. What has he been able to do? Corruption and TV and robbery under his very nose. Corruption and TV under this government. The special prosecutor is not interested. Look, the special prosecutor is nothing but a vendetta office that is created to go after political opponents. Tell me all these allegations that have been made against appointees of this government. Why is the special prosecutor not interested in that? Look, this government has no moral ground to talk about corruption because what we are experiencing under President Nanado is not corruption, it's thievery. As a matter of fact, when the corruption started from Adam, many of us laughed over it. To a very large extent, I am tempted to agree with President Kufuor that yes, corruption has been with us. The difference between President Kufuor's administration, President Rawlings' administration, President Mohammed's administration, President Mills's administration, and in fact, President Nkrumah, the, the successive leadership we have in this country, both military and democratic leaders. The difference between them on one hand and President Nanado's administration is that President Nanado has perfected corruption. When is your Look, manifesto coming? We have indicated on the 7th of September, okay. and I have no doubt in mind that the people of this country would laugh some of the things because that manifesto was not put up by people who have no respect for truth. We are being told that the manifesto that the MPP showcased as a manifesto for the people of this country, mm. the Excellency, the Vice President played a critical role in that manifesto. And if I can borrow uh, my senior brother's uh, uh, statement, the uh, uh, Honorable A.B.F. Hussaini, that if the Vice President greets you good afternoon, before you respond, look at the position of the sun before you respond. Okay. You saw the tracker, the embarrassment that he brought upon himself. I don't know who into embarrassing himself every single day that they indeed stole projects, projects that are non-existent. They have done that. The people of this country know the difference between a government that is sincere and honest and transparent than a government that is peddling falsehood every single day. Okay. Between a government Thank that is decent and respect that every individual in this country has equal opportunity at the stake of management, managing this country. And when you raise issues, thank you. You know what they tell you? And I won't be surprised, my brother says that they say you are jealous. You remember last week he said, or last two weeks, he said that those who are questioning the TV of this government, PDS, that we do so because we are jealous. That is the level of arrogance. Are you jealous? Well, well, if questioning the conduct and TV that is perpetrated by officialdom in this country, and that means I am jealous, then I am. It's right. You are jealous of the successes chalked by President Akufado, which will give him four more years. No, I am worried about the robbery, the state capture. I am worried about the thievery. I am worried about the insensitive nature of the kind of policies that are formulated. Okay. Formulated thank, thank you. with one purpose to rob this country the more. Thank and you. And I think that all of us should be worried. My thank brother, you. Your, mic, your mic is muted. Thank you very much. Sorry. Uh, Etnam has messages. When we come back, we'll listen to Andrew Japa Mesa. Etnam. <laughs> okay. So Mutala and NDC have nothing to offer Ghanaians. Laura Constituency Nasara Coordinator. I'm a boy from Jirapa in the Upper West Region. Johnny. Mesa knows answering your questions will entangle him. That's why he doesn't want you to go ahead with your questions. MPP is ashamed. It's a shame, government. Uh, good morning, Johnny. Hmm. The only fact and truth about COVID-19 is that it is real. We must all observe the protocols. But for government, the truth and management is absurd. Please ask President Ekufado about the soft loans he promised private teachers and self-employed citizens. Ghanaians applied, but uh, nothing is heard. Private institution staff are suffering under this lockdown. Yes, there's no package to ameliorate uh, the situation. We pay tax and snits. 
Ghanaians truly deserve better from Victor Rapture and Ho. Good morning, Johnny. Please, is, is it logical when the government says it is interested in sustaining the lives and livelihoods when mm -hmm. private sector is of greater percent compared to public sector? I'm a private uh, teacher, and what we are going through, home, please, Honorable uh, Bono should show some level Bobo. of. Uh, Bobo should yeah. show some uh, level of morality. Good morning, Johnny. Tell me, Sage, apart that our hospitals are no more full with corona cases because test results don't come early within the 14 days. Government is not feeding uh, COVID patients again. No really? supply of PPEs anymore. And there's nothing like contact tracing anymore. So how do the government expect us to admit COVID patients from a concerned Ness in Wa. Jenny, good morning mm. and your Zoom panelists. We can deliberate over the issues of COVID-19, but the fact of the matter is that the pandemic did not uh, befall us under the era of NDC. Four more for Nana, and that is final. Uh, good morning, John. The president announced yesterday evening that from nursery uh, to GHS and SHS will be returning to school next year, January. So if I may ask, what is the essence of setting up a committee to look into the safe reopening mm -hmm. of schools and are supposed to submit their report to the education ministry on 21st September? It clearly shows that mm -hmm. the president do not care <laughs> about we, the private school teachers. For the past five months now, I haven't been paid my salary and surviving has not been easy now. The president comes to extend the reopening of schools to next year. How does he expect us to survive till next year? The government needs to pay the private school teachers too. We are all Ghanaians and we are suffering. Kwame Arthur sent that from Kandida. That'll be it for your messages. This okay, morning. thank you very much. Uh, Bobo, I'll start with you on a point of interest regarding the opening of schools. I know that the uh, WASI candidates are sitting for their exam. Once they are done, they would have to get into the university or tertiary, tertiary uh, institutions. I know also that there was a Professor Yanka committee that was set up to see how we we're going to rope in all the graduates and give them a smooth pass into it. Do you know what the latest is? The last time I checked, they said they were working. Do you, do you, would you know what the latest is? No, I, I don't. Okay. I, I may have. Okay. Take, take, take a bite then on, on what uh, Mutala spoke about quickly and then we'll, we'll wrap up. You see, I, I am sad, you know, that a major political party in this country would conduct its affairs, would provide a message to the people of Ghana purely on falsehoods and lies. Bobo, you'd have to speak up a bit for me. Uh, we can yes, have I said I'm sad that a major political party which seeks the mandate of the people who conduct its affairs based purely on lies and falsehoods. And let me take this opportunity to assure the good people of this country. The NPP government are not thieves. We are not stealing the resources of this country as is being alleged by the NDC. We are honest people who have a heart to seek to, as it were, improve the lot of our people. And that's it. I see. See, look, yes, there are, there are, there are you, you, you may mention a few incidents here and there, but the Japan royalties is TV. PDS is TV. The United States government told the government of Ghana to allow PDS to procure a new guarantee. You think the United States government would endorse TV? Listen to them right from the very beginning. They kept changing goalposts at every point. And it's the same that they are doing with this Ejapa royalties. It's sad. Imagine the Mahama tracker. The setting up of a company in Jersey. Okay? Let me get the name for you. Garden Limited. To lease the Gulf Stream. Was, was anything wrong with it then? Look, the good people of this country know which party better manages the affairs of this country. You inherited an oil-rich economy and drove it aground. Said that you had to go to the IMF for policy credibility. You talk about corruption. The former president is directly implicated in a global corruption. Hmm. Airbus. You talk of corruption. I thought that Martin Amidu was investigating the Airbus no, no, scandal, no, 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 no. had issued please, a red please. alert. You are a lawyer. Please. You are a lawyer. Please, please. What does please. it mean? What I does it mean to start an investigation, issue a red, red alert? What does it mean? Where Mr. Muhammad's brother was used as a conduit for delivering messages to him. But there was a red gone. alert on his head. What no. happened to that? Please, hold on. Please, I'm not Martin Amidu. You can ask him. 
Okay? You went to the Securities and Exchange Commission alleging corruption against the $2.5 million uh, billion dollar bond. What was the outcome? Assuming you went with the Kaboom, you would, still, you, have, you would have returned by now. Okay. The falsehoods and lies won't wash. Ghanaians know which government is better able to transform this country. Ghanaians know which government is able to impact every corner of this country with development. Okay? You yourself, per your own announcement, said you were going to deliver your manifesto. Nobody compelled you not to. Now they are asking you questions about the rationale for your postponing the outdooring of your manifesto. You go around in circles and want to say what? You okay. want to compare yourself to the MPP. Thank you. He said on the 7th of September, wait for it, it will come. I don't have a problem with 7th of September. In any event, why? What are they going to say? Okay, thank you. you. Andrew Japan Mesa is that, a member that, of parliament for the good people of uh, Second D constituency. He's joined us this morning uh, from his constituency and also on the ticket of the NPP. And uh, that's Andre Chapa Mesa. And that's uh, Comrade Mutala Mohammed, as he likes to be called. He's a former Deputy Minister for Trade. He's also the NDC's candidate for the Tamale Central constituency, the Honorable Mutala Mohammed.